You know, the other night, I went to bed early for me because I had the measles. I had spoken around here and answered a few thousand questions, and uh, I had just gotten to sleep, and it was roughly 11.30, and the phone rang. Now, ordinarily, I'm very alert, no matter how long I've slept or how short. So a telephone operator said, will you accept a call from, and then I won't name the character's name, he may turn out to be all right. And I thought it was someone I knew. I know so many people. <laughs> of course, they're all my friends. So I said, sure, sure, you know. So this guy gets on and he says, I'm a taper. He says, you don't know me. <laughs> well, I was delighted he was a taper. And he said, uh, I'm here in Los Angeles. Well, it's not unusual to hear from people in Los Angeles. They have to be there. They'll just call you, collect, and, you know. <laughs> so I made some appropriate noise for people who are in Los Angeles. And he said, uh, but I really don't live here. And he told me where he lived, and he lived about a thousand miles from Los Angeles. Well, I thought I'd just be conversational, since it was on me anyway. <laughs> so I said to this character, I said, what are you doing in Los Angeles? <laughs> and then he told me. He said, uh, I'm down here selling poetry. Well, I not only don't have any friends who write poetry, but I don't have any friends who sell poetry. Well, I knew by now I must have an enemy on the other end. So I said, uh, well, then why did you call me? I said, I'm not in the market for any poetry. He says, oh, no. He said, I've heard a couple of your tapes. Of course, anyone's heard a couple doesn't know me very well. So he said that uh, since he'd been in L.A., he had encountered a number of people in the tongues movement, and he just hadn't been able to answer some of their arguments. And he said that he had his Bible right there. I would, mind, would I mind explaining to him all of the tongues passages in the Bible? <laughs> At that point, I spoke in a tongue. <laughs> and I used my best vocabulary, the one I spare you. And I told him when I thought of him, what I thought of tongues, and what I thought of the whole deal, and what I thought of anyone that writes poetry, and a few thousand other things. And then I suddenly realized that I was telling him of my time. <laughs> so then I told him what tapes he could get. Oh, and I asked him another thing. He said, of course you have your tape recorder there. And he said, no, he left it back in, where I won't name this town. I said, you went somewhere without your tape recorder even to sell poetry? And I chewed him on that one. So I finally explained to him how he could get tapes. He had a four-track recorder. I picked that up. And I suspect that he probably has an order in the four-track right now for tons and several other things. And you know that our four-track thing is broken down again for the umpteenth thousandth time? So when we have our silent prayer tonight, you can pray for tapes and pubs, and you can pray that we that I won't I start to tell you <laughs> that that piece of equipment will get back on its feet till we replace it with Ampex. <laughs> <laughs>